Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and hello to you, Reed Rhymers, the host of uh, SciShow and the mistake that you made on the show. Today, I'm going to talk to you, Reed Rhymers, and also I'm going to talk to everyone else watching this video because I would like to actually correct the mistake that they made on the show regarding black holes, and the mistake was relatively big, so I do need to address this. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. <laughs> So today we're talking about black holes and specifically about the creation of black holes and specifically we're going to be correcting a small mistake from SciShow, a show that I actually watch quite regularly where uh, they talked about uh, Blitzars and in this particular episode that I'm going to show you right now uh, something happened and this something really kind of grabbed onto my heart and pulled it out and then looked at it and said this is a mistake and then put it back in so I had to make a video. Anywho, um, so Everybody makes mistakes. That's pretty clear. I've made plenty of mistakes myself. One day, maybe I'll make a video compiling all of them sort of into one big video where we'll talk about all the mistakes and science behind them and why I made them and what the actual story is. But this mistake right here was totally unexcusable. Okay, it was, but uh, let's watch the video. To understand Blitzars, it helps to know a bit about neutron stars in general. These objects can form when large stars die in gigantic explosions called supernovas. If what's left over after the supernova is massive enough, gravity will pull it all in to a black hole. But if there's a little less stuff left over, gravity will sort of force together the protons and electrons from the old star's core. Wait a second. So according to Reed Reimers, the way that the black hole forms after the supernova is by... If what's left over after the supernova is massive enough, gravity will pull it all in to a black hole. No, 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 no. Let's, let's investigate this. So basically what he's saying, and I'm really sorry for putting you on the spot, Reed, and if you're watching this, I'm, my apologies, but I just thought I'd make a video because it sounded like something I needed to correct. And uh, feel free to make a video of correcting my mistakes from, from the past. So anyway, black holes. Oh yeah, here, here's one from the uh, universe sandbox in the middle of the solar system, which will never happen because the sun will never turn into a black hole. Here is another one that we're going to generate from a star. We're going to pick a large enough star, a massive enough star, that has a mass of approximately 21 suns. This is going to be Rigel. Rigel one day will most likely make a, a black hole. So at some point, and we're going to run this really, really, really slowly, it's going to basically um, start a procedure of a core collapse. Now. There's a lot to say about core collapse, and there are still a lot of things we don't know about core collapse, but basically what really kind of starts occurring is inside a star, um, it starts converting different elements into other elements, and those release some energy. But at some point it reaches um, the moment where it starts uh, producing iron. And iron, combining two iron atoms together, doesn't really produce any more energy. So it basically starts accumulating iron inside its core. And it will reach a point where there will not be enough energy produced from the inside, but there will be a lot of gravity pushing from the outside. And the sort of process of core collapse starts beginning. And moments after, what usually happens um, is basically a supernova. So the star explodes in a very, very, very powerful explosion. It releases a tremendous amount of gamma rays and basically uh, vast shell of material from the star starts expanding relatively fast. Now, what Reed said was that eventually this material stops and then sort of starts coming back and collapses into a black hole. That is actually not correct. As a matter of fact, the black holes form even before the supernova occurs. Uh, oh, wow, look at this beautiful creation I've made. This is, uh, by the way, um, a newly updated Universe Sandbox that has uh, updated Supernova, and they all look absolutely marvelous. They look absolutely gorgeous. And they are a lot more randomized and a lot more unpredictable. But in essence, unlike what Reed said in his video, this does not go back. They don't actually, the material does not return back into the middle. It just, it, it does fly away. Uh, okay, it, it spreads across the space. And in the middle there, you will have a black hole. Now, this thing that's now known as Rigel Nova Remnant forms uh, like microseconds, milliseconds before the actual supernova occurs. As a matter of fact, the, what we think today is that the core collapse begins. And here's actually maybe another video from NASA in this case. A core collapse begins right here. So, okay, this is a little bit fast. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. Um, 
So here we go. The core collapse begins, and right at this moment, um, essentially the black hole has already been created. But around the star, there's still going to be a lot of um, outer materials. There's going to be basically the star shell. Now, if the core is massive enough, it will collapse all the way in, will completely disappear and turn into a black hole. In other words, if the star is massive or really massive, it will be become a black hole. If it's not massive enough, it will actually create a neutron star and some of the material will actually bounce back. And a lot of this material that bounces back uh, will essentially produce uh, really heavy elements like gold, platinum, and pretty much everything after iron is created during the supernova uh, from a neutron star um, supernova. Now, what is interesting here, though, is the fact that right at this point, when the star is about to explode, deep inside of it, there's already a black hole. So the core has collapsed, the black hole has been created, and it actually starts moving around the star a little bit and even eat it from the inside. It actually starts absorbing some of the material, and that material is uh, accumulated on, on the surface of the black hole. A lot of it actually goes inside and uh, produces tremendous amounts of energy. But at the same time, um, the star itself is still sort of, it still looks like a star for like a few milliseconds. But as this material accumulates on the inside and so much energy is produced, the black hole starts sort of like, almost like burping, and it burps out a lot of the um, energy and the star slowly starts to fall apart and the supernova occurs moments afterwards. So basically, if I press the explode button again, right now, that's, uh, that black hole on the inside has already existed for a little bit. And so right after the black hole is created and starts eating the inside of the star, a moment after, we still are not sure why, but that's really when the actual supernova triggers and the star explodes and the shell sort of flies all over the place, the shell of the star. The core, though, does become the black hole. Uh, now, so, like I said, there's still a few things we don't entirely know about this particular uh, situation. Like, for example, r the moments right before the black hole is created and the moments before the supernova occurs, there's still a few iffy things we're not certain about. And this is actually uh, right here, one of the best sort of simulations of um, the moments before the black hole is created and before the supernova occurs. But we do know that the core itself starts slushing around a lot and the material around the core um, starts moving really, really, really fast. And a lot of the reasons why supernova is so explos explosive and things move so fast is really because uh, of this really unusual slushing around the core that happens moments before the supernova um, triggers. But the black hole is created basically before this event. So, in other words, when Reed mentions that a supernova it, it happens first and then the material sort of comes back and creates the black hole, that's really where the mistake is, because that's not entirely true. Well, as a matter of fact, it's, uh, we think at least, it's not really true at all. Everything else in the video is pretty awesome, and he does talk about uh, blitzars, which are essentially the, uh, well, the, these objects, I guess, in a sense. Um, it's the neutron star that turns into a black hole and releases a tremendous amount of material um, and also tremendous amount of energy. And uh, one of the things he mentions in the video is that we think, or some scientists think, or I guess a minor body of scientists think that blitzars are possibly the reasons for the so-called um, FRBs, which are fast radio bursts. Which is actually a concept I briefly mentioned in one of the previous videos, so do check it out, uh, because FRBs are one of the last mysteries of the universe. We don't really know what makes them, and we don't really know what causes them. But supernova, though, are not as mysterious to us anymore, and we do understand them relatively accurately, and we've simulated them in actual supercomputers here on Earth. Well, that's really all I wanted to say and all I wanted to talk about, and in one of the future videos, maybe we'll actually go through step-by-step step of how the black hole is created from an actual supernova and how supermassive black holes are formed as well. Well, anywho, thank you so much for watching and Reed, I'm really sorry for putting you on the spot, but I thought it was a pretty cool topic and I thought I would explain the actual moments of the creation of the black hole. Yeah, there are some things we don't know, but we definitely know that it's not from matter coming back after the supernova because the matter actually just kind of spreads into the outer space. See you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, Bye-bye.